Welcome to the webinar. Thank you for joining. We're not going to start right now. Just testing the sound to let you know that I am here, that I am moving my lips and soon we'll be starting the webinar. Thank you for joining. Welcome to this webinar out of uh, Barcelona today, in sunny Barcelona. Um, I'm Finn from Academy, and I'm here for 30 minutes to tell you about the MB3 920 fundamentals, the all new exam, which is replacing or partly replacing one of the good old ones, the 901, which is going to be split into two. In this webinar, I have promised you in the uh, description of uh, the webinar that this will be about the skills required from Microsoft. Uh, so how to pass the new Excel or not quite, but what you need to know to uh, pass the examiner. So what you would know about the fundamentals in here and how you actually pass it. So on the menu today, the exam requirements from Microsoft, what it really takes from my point of view, and uh, since I did sit the exam, but the beta one and the results are not out, I really don't know if I passed, but I think I've got a feeling about that. I'll tell you later on. Tips and tricks, the question types to expect and how you would prepare the best way. Uh, now, you would know if you've done an exam for Microsoft, they're not allowed to give too much away, so I have to be a little bit careful. Uh, if I don't give the things away that you would like to know, ask a question in the chat where Alison and Henry will help me answering the questions uh, as we go. And then at the end of the session today, I'll have a quick question and answer session where I'll pick up the questions that you had that I didn't answer during the presentation. Also, of course, it's interesting to know where you would learn more. Obviously, we would like to uh, teach you some things and Microsoft would as well. So let's get going. Even though this is a fundamentals course, uh, there's still a lot of things in here, surprisingly much, I would say. The course description itself. The course description says from Microsoft that you'll be introduced to the basic concepts of ERP or enterprise resource uh, planning, management, or whatever the name is these days, as well as each of the finance narrations apps. Uh, now, I'm not sure if anybody knows what the current finance narrations apps would be. But at least in the description of the course of the exam, you would know more. The exam requirements in this skills, as I mentioned, and if you want to see what it looks like, I have placed a link in here, xcademy.com backslash mb-920e for the exam description. In the official exam description, we have the supply chain management including manufacturing, which accounts for 25 to 30%. We've got the finance, which accounts for 20 to 25%. And then we've got what I would say the rest. Well, there's a little bit of difference between what the rest of the ones would be, because some of the rest would be apps like the commerce, retail, but now with different things in it, including fraud protection, 10 to 15%. Got human resources that used to be talent, that used to be human resources, uh, five to 10%. And then we've got the project operations, 
which is part the uh, project management and accounting that some of us would know from Dynamic 365 Finance Operations, plus some new things. Um, it really comes in three different flavors, but right now in this exam that are fundamentals, it should be the simple things. It should be. And then, by the way, at the end of this, Microsoft has added described shared features, 10 to 15%. And don't miss that one. It's an important part of the exam as everything is. So I will call the top ones, the supply chain management and the finance plus the shared features. I'll call it kind of classic things, even though it has a little bit of power platform and other things as well. And then we've got the newer apps and things that have been separated, taken out of or combined the things from finance operations, the commerce, human resources, and the project operations as well. No business central um, in the description, that is. I was in for a surprise at the exam, a surprise or two. Business central did pop up. Now, tips and tricks in general, what kind of a, uh, question types to expect and your provision options. And please understand, this is on the background of the beta exam that I set, and then the other things that I've been able to discover from descriptions and other things as well. The exam is not finalized yet. Uh, I would expect this to happen anytime soon. Uh, it was supposed to happen in April at least, so that kind of busy. At the exam, I had 60 minutes for 45 questions. And often that was questions within questions. So I was fairly busy. Uh, questions within questions. It's not the multiple choice ones. So those types are in here too. But sometimes, as some of us would know from other exams like the M300 core, the M310 finance, and so on, there will be five questions within a question to you. There's quite a lot of questions in them. You have to speak your way through. And sometimes, you can't. The question types, and however, they do help. Uh, there's drag and drop, so you have to match. Um, this is a description, and then you will find what is the terminology. This is for um, for lean manufacturing, or this would be for a product master, or this would be for a collection letter, or whatever. So we'll be matching things, and I like those. It keeps you awake in the exam. Sometimes there's a drop down and select. You've got a drop down list and you have to find the most correct of those. Quite often those ones have questions within questions. And then we've got the good old style multiple choice, select the or those two correct answers or most correct answers as it sometimes says. Those are the simplest of the ones and especially since they do offer you how many you need to select out of the answers in that. So these are the question types. There are no hands-on in this exam, or there was, I had to uh, add at my exam. And there were no long case studies, uh, gate fit matches, where you got a couple of pages with a customer situation, and then you, as an IT professional, or whatever your role would be, then you would need to have to select the best fit for the situation in here. None of those ones, uh, fortunately, because 45 questions with questions in, questions for 60 minutes only. That's quite a lot of things. And uh, it's areas all over the place and not so many of us, I think. We are sort of having the experience all over the place. So what you need from my point of view is that you need a very good memory and you do also need a broad knowledge of the various applications. Now, not about the setup, some other conceptual things, which kind of uh, manufacturing processes, what you need for this and that is, is it the process discrete, lean, or whatever what you do. If you want a product with brains on it, what would you set up? And if you want to send three collection letters to a customer with 10 days between, what would they, what is a process? Where do you set these things up? So it's not down to the nitty gritty things or parameters, I would say. It's not really complicated things, but you need to know quite a lot of things. I've got some examples of um, that question, right? I'm not allowed to give that, but uh, in which areas it could be. So you need to be around 
The good thing about the 920 exam that along with the 910 exam replaces the 901, which will be phased out by the end of June. The good thing is that the 901 had both the customer engagement that I constantly call CRM, and then the ERP, our finance operations in one exam. And not too many people I know, they felt good about that. So now it's split into two 910 for the customer engagement, and this, the current, the one we discussed today, the 920 for the finance operations, the ERP. I think that is a very good idea. And I think this is the lowest hanging fruit, not low, but lowest hanging fruit when it comes to a certification in finance operations, because you only need to pass, you only need to pass one exam to get certified. For the rest of them, you need core plus something. But it really takes, from my point of view, what do you talk about that? A very good understanding of the shared features. The shared features, I've got examples of that later on. The typical ones would be Power Platform, Office Integration, Email Configuration, and more. It gets to some details. So the shared features, I was surprised by how much they actually asked about. So I would say it's more like the 15% than it was the 10 Supply chain management, including manufacturing. I'm not a manufacturing guy. I know this and that about manufacturing. So I was feeling kind of okay. But they did get into some details. Product information management, and procurement flow with purchase orders and other things too. So it is a fundamentals, but it's not basic for sure. The same thing with finance, including things about financial dimensions, account structures, um, advanced rules. And other things, so you need to know your application, the conceptual things in there. And that's what the courseware and the training, also our training, Microsoft Learn as well, leads to get the concepts. So a very good understanding, I would say, of the concepts for the shared features, for supply chain, uh, supply chain management, including manufacturing, and finance as well. And then to a less degree, not entirely due to the valuation, uh, but because it is less deep in the question. Then a good understanding of commerce, retail, if you prefer, including fraud protection. Don't forget that part, please. Uh, there could be things about how do you make sure that your bank uh, approves more payments coming through or whatever the error will be. That's fraud protection, important part of uh, commerce. Human resources, um, very little, but still uh, a bit detailed for me. I'm not very much into human resources. So those couple of questions, or was it three? I a little bit trouble with those. So you could say that's an area that I'm, no, I don't care. I'll just do the rest. That's the way to go. Don't spend too much time in that area. That would be me. Practice operations, uh, a lot of things in this, uh, primarily with the new things. Um, I've been working a lot with uh, product management and accounting module. And I have to say that the questions I experienced in project operations were new, uh, new in the way that these were things we had to think about this new application, which was only introduced last year, I think in Q4, uh, calendar Q4 in 2020 was made available to partners. So not so many projects, uh, working on a couple right now where it seems to be part of the project of becoming part of the project, but not really much hands-on experience with it. So purely by studying, I think it was okay, but you have to study whatever is available of the materials in here since you probably don't have too much practical experience with project operations yet. And then again, there is, as far as I know, three different flavors of project operations, including how much you actually use from project management and accounting in classic finance and operations. So the top three, I would say you need a very good understanding of the concepts, uh, what you could do a few buzzwords and so on. And then a good overall understanding of the lower three, commerce, human resource, and project operations. The biggest surprise to me was um, the shared features, I would say. Uh, I was a bit surprised about the, well, many questions there were and what the deal source would be. And then even though Microsoft has um, removed any mention of Business Central in the exam description, I met some of those not questions about Business Central, but in the answers, would a good solution be Business Central plus project operations plus whatever? 
And so it pops up in them. Just be aware of that. Okay, in the shared features, uh, some examples of uh, what good preparations could be, and make sure you do understand the navigation workspaces, some of our personal favorites, so the office integration possibilities, including Excel Workbook Designer and uh, other tools as well, the Power BI platform, uh, whether it's going to be embedded or how you're going to use it, and email integration. I was surprised by that. In supply chain management, uh, it's huge. Uh, so there are so many things that um, you could be asked about. Conceptual things, uh, what kinds of manufacturing processes do we cover? How do you do a work order? Uh, how would you set up products to have product variants on them? Uh, how do we configure the site, the warehouse? Uh, what is the process of a purchase order? And uh, how do you do locations? A lot of things. And uh, the same thing goes for finance. There's lots of things in there. Uh, 20 to 25% financial dimension, advanced rules, account structures, periodical processes like uh, year end, uh, what's possible. I think I had some questions about the, the general capability of Dynamic 365 compared to good old AX or Acceptor. There are things that could be global enterprise wide. And I think that's a typical thing of Microsoft exams. Uh, in Dynamics 365, they want to sort of overweigh the new things that happen compared to the old AX uh, 2012 and so on. Can't blame the kind of marketing in, in the exams, right? But for new things that didn't exist in prior versions, so could have questions about that. So you could do global general journals or for the periodical processes that you could uh, put across several legal entities, you could put uh, periods hold or whatever would be those new global functionality that we have in Dynamics 365. Also some classic things about the credit and collection. As far as I remember, nothing about the new functionality that was added um, late last year about credit management, the things with guarantees and other things too. But overall, credit collection processes, the free text invoices, the vendor payments, and other typical things. And then a new one, a fairly new one, expense management which is just a small module, but uh, there were a couple of questions in there about that. There are some good videos from Microsoft. That could be a good preparation, armchair preparation in here, but make sure that you understand things about expense management. There could be a couple of low-hanging fruits in there, easy, uh, easy answers to some of these, but get the concepts in this flag in the rest of the places. And yes, it is in finance. It's Kind of in the old days, it was um, just a part of project manufacturing and accounting. Now it's working also with the project operations, and there could be some mixed questions in that or those two areas. Expense management, worth noting. And then the rest of the things kind of on, on one slide in here uh, only. And uh, the channel management concepts about setting up the stores and distribution and how you can set up assortments involving things with uh, organization hierarchies, an important setup that we do in finance operations that could be worth um, paying attention to, including the distributed order management, which is a special, fairly new thing in supply chain management, uh, organization hierarchies as well. Um, some of the things that we use the organization hierarchies for called purposes. Fraud protection, but commerce has mentioned what are two questions in those, human resource, uh, Right, the people, compensation, benefit capabilities, um, training, uh, skills gap mapping, and other things too. Compliance. And then in practical operations, there are things like uh, <laughs> that's a big area practical life cycle planning and execution. That was sort of uh, as close as I can get. I'm allowed to get on the questions that I actually came to. If you have questions for me, please drop them in the chat and we'll see what we can get to. In here. How to prepare for the exam? Study, practice, and practice test. Well, not all is available yet. Uh, the exam is not even out of beta, so we don't get the evaluation of the exams yet. But uh, you could study, you could practice. The practice test, you have to wait. So the studying could be that uh, you learn more. Microsoft Academy or both. Microsoft got some things in uh, the uh, on the learn, 
And um, sorry, just had to switch off the camera. And we have a live online course coming fairly soon. Live online course for us called all sorts of things. Uh, virtual live instructor class when you're truly coming up very soon. I'm uh, just waiting for the final things to happen with the exam and so on. And that's the reason why our on-demand or our self-study, as we call it, uh, is coming soon. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll surely be told about that. That could be places to go. Of course, uh, Microsoft Learn is free. That could be a good place to start. But we might have some tempting off of you about our live class coming up soon. The courseware. Courseware, Microsoft official courseware. That's Skillpack to me. So in Skillpack, uh, the table of content looks like you can see right now in the presentation on the right-hand side. And notably, there's only five modules. Something went wrong in here. Uh, supply chain management, yeah. Finance, sure. Commerce and fraud protection, yep. That's uh, module number three. Human resource, module number four. And uh, project operations, that's module number five. What about your shared features? Did you cut out something, Finn, or whatever? No. It's in module number one for some reason. So make sure when you prepare in here that you understand we've got six topics that you've been scored on at the exam. And the important shared features, I would say important, right? It's 10 to 15% and closer to 15 out of my questions, at least. They're hidden in module number one. So don't miss that, please. This is a courseware. It's a courseware you get when you join live online classes like ours and so on, the official Microsoft course. Right? And how do you then, how do you practice then? Well, hands-on, right? But you need to have some uh, qualified cases. And this is from the uh, training environments that we use. Microsoft prepare them and, and uh, we use them for our live online classes and so on. And on these ones, we've got these ones for 180 days, I think it is. And on these ones, you then find, um, I can't remember how many labs it would be, but you can see a few on the left-hand side, some of the ones in here, and then you, we've got a lot more. So normally around 20, and then we join the class, we add some more of our own. So these are the training environments. This is the ME920 with those, remember, six areas, um, the shared functionality, and then with the supply chain management, finance, with commerce, human resource, and with projects operations as well. So we cover the various areas in here, including in the, well, sort of the hidden area of the shared features, uh, hidden away in module number one in Sculpt. So those things combined, um, studying, practicing, hands-on, that's probably going to make you ready for the exam, for the practice test. You know, we normally supply the practice test for our students. It's not available yet from uh, Measure Up, the only ones who do the Microsoft official practice test. Now, Alison uh, has uh, probably something to tell you about the exclusive offer that we do. In the meantime, watch out for the offers that pops up in the sidebar in your, on your screen and see what we got in here. Let me just tell you, this is about our MB920 live online class coming up in the beginning of May. And uh, it's been very popular with our students that we do half day classes. So you could do sort of not your full job in a half day. Nobody's going to admit that, but at least you can mix work and study during the day. So this class, just like a lot of our other classes, are half day classes and normally in the afternoon. So we can have students from most places in the world. We can't find a time zone that fits everybody, but this seems to be okay. And this then, we will go through these five plus the hidden one, uh, the hidden section about the shared tools up here in module number one. And for this, we offer you 50% discount for the first signups. This is the first class, so we thought we we're going to do a little bit extra. Uh, use this code in here. Uh, 2B8HDSM9. That's the toughest thing. And then get the discount when you check out from our website. Final words, and then we get through the question and answer session. Please don't forget, as I have brought up before, we've got a blog post on our website about there are big changes coming to Microsoft certification. 
exploration policy that from July, the exams will be valid one year only. So any exam that you pass before that, any certification that you gain before July will have a value of two years. And then you need to go to a, a kind of a small renew, not a new exam, but some of the new things that has happened. You can read more about that uh, on Microsoft website or in our blog post. So the certifications will expire after a year unless you refresh it. And the refresh will be a smaller thing than the exam. And it is right now at least told to be free. So I think there's every reason to get your certifications before the first of July. They will not expire until two years. After the first of July, they will expire after one year. And I do know that it is free. I just <laughs> said so. We got it on our website in the blog post that you can see right now on my screen. But if you plan for being certified soon, I think you should do it before the first of July. That said, let me just see what we've got in the chat section over here, if there are any questions about this. Of course, you could always ask questions afterwards in the chat on our website, where Henny is normally taking care of that, or diverting it to instructors around the place. Uh, in the question session over here. Let's now, questions a little bit with the sound. Seems like you guys were helping each other. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Alison mentioned that we are on LinkedIn, and so we are on a YouTube and so on as well. Seems like it was all taken care of in here. Um, for the um, presentation and uh, the slideshow, we'll send out uh notifications to you where you can find the presentation where you can see it again in here and that will normally be out within 24 to 48 hours so all questions answered or rather no questions asked thank you very much for your time today look forward to see you in another webinar and perhaps even in the class mb 920 coming up very soon read more on our web page then just a few more links you can find more about the exam on this link, exam.com backslash mb-920e, blog post, newsletter, more on-demand courses, and so on. Suggestions, always welcome for a similar presentation like this or other topics that you'd like to see in some of our webinars. We do them on a regular basis, and you can see more on exam.com backslash free webinar. We can also find the prior ones that we've done. Thank you very much for your time today. Hope to see you again soon. This was Finn out of sunny Barcelona. I wish you a pleasant day. Bye-bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.